Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalVantage.com. I wanted to do a video on camming smarter and not harder. So the focus on this video is going to be how do we duplicate our efforts without actually having to go and reprogram different components on our screen. Shout out to Danny Suskin. He was just in one of my recent classes and thought this would be a good, uh, good video. And uh, I agree with him. I think this is a good idea to show for video. So thanks Danny for the idea. I want to look at a couple different examples. The first example that we're going to look at is how to run multiple vices up on a table. Let's pretend that my machine can have three vices up on the table and the part that you see on the screen, I want to duplicate it three times, but I only want to program it once. So let's look at the tools that Fusion has built in to be able to do that. Before we get to that, let's do a run through of what I've got programmed on this part. We start out with a two inch face mill that just removes the material from the top. We move to a 3D adaptive operation with a half inch end mill. And notice it's just uh, kind of removing the material that's left over. Do a 2D contour on the outside of the part with the same end mill to clean up the outside and final dimensions. I then come back with a quarter inch tool doing a 3D adaptive to just pick out the areas where the half inch tool couldn't fit. So in this particular 3D roughing operation, I'm using rest machining. I use the 2D pocket functionality inside of Fusion to clean up the floors and do a contour pass around the walls and the inside pockets. Then we come back with a quarter inch chamfer tool to do the chamfers around the part. Use that same tool to spot and chamfer the holes. Do our tap drill and then come back with the tap to finish up the part. So that's the cam for this part. And like I said, we want to make three, uh, three different parts at the same time. This is the same part of three times. We want to duplicate this. So if you've never tried before, getting three vices on a table completely uh, trammed together, spaced evenly, lined up, isn't the easiest task in the world. And so what would be maybe easy is to set up three vices and then teach the first vice to be work coordinate system G54, the second vice to be work coordinate system G55, and the third vice to be work coordinate system G56. If you're not familiar, in G-code there are uh, G54 through G59 are reserved for work coordinate system positions. This is where we teach the machine what the X, Y, and Z planes are so that the, uh, the machine understands where the stock of the part is for the operation. Inside of Fusion, we have some easy ways to be able to program the part once and then run that part in multiple vices at the same time. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we do that. I'm gonna edit my setup, and for this, I'm gonna go to the post process tab. Now, a couple things to note, my work coordinate system is currently set to zero. And if your work coordinate system is set to zero, that will give you a G54. You can also set this to one and one will also give you G54. That will be important to note a little bit later on in this video. So what I wanna focus on here is I wanna be able to run multiple work coordinate system offsets. I wanna be able to make multiple parts. So I'm gonna check the box. And the first field that Fusion's asking me about is how many total parts do I wanna make? So here I'm going to enter three. The second question is what do I want to, uh, to increment the work coordinate system by? In this case, I'm going to increment it by one. So my first work coordinate system is going to be a zero. That's going to be, give me a G54. If I take zero plus one, that will give me a one. And that's also going to give me a G54. And one plus one is two. And that's going to give me a G55. So in this scenario, the way I have things set up, I'm going to run the first part twice the second part once, and I'm not gonna to get to the third part at all. So one of the helpful tips I have for you guys is I think it's wise to set your work coordinate system offset to be one, right click in the field and make that the default. From here on out, you'll never have to worry about that zero one situation. If we look at it now, one will give us a G54, one plus one is two, that gives us a G55, two plus one is three, that gives us a G56. So in this scenario, we're gonna run all three parts. So it was what we want. Um, we have another option that we can look at under the operation order. The first option we have is to preserve the order. That means run the first part in its entirety before it moves on to the second part. Run that second part in its entirety before moving on to the third part. That is not the most efficient way to program. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of tool changes and things like that. The next option is to 
order by operation. So this would say, do all the facing in the first part, do all the facing in the second part, do all the facing in the third part, then come back and do all of the 3D adaptive with a half inch end mill the, uh, on the first part, the same thing on the second part, the 3D adaptive uh, with a half inch end mill on the third part, go, going back and forth like that. Then the final option is to order by the tool. So this will be the most efficient use of your tool changes so that you don't have to change tools so often. It's gonna run all the tools that it can in the first part, that same tool in the second part, the same tool in the third part before doing a tool change and starting over on the first part. So this is one of your more efficient options. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click OK. And you'll see all my operations turn red because I made a change to the setup. So we're just gonna right click and generate the tool pass over again. And when these get done generating, we'll post this out and take a look at what the code shows us. So that one adaptive just got done. This is a, uh, a rest machining operation, so that took a second. So we'll just click on our setup and hit the post process button. We'll use a Haas next generation control, pre next generation control, hit okay. And I'm gonna run with the defaults and just hit save and replace and brackets opens up. So if we take a look, first we're doing a facing with a two inch mill. So if we look through the code, here is a G54. If I slide down a bit to the next one, there's a G55. And if we go and look, there's our G56. So programmed it once. And now uh, we'll see that Fusion was able to spit out multiple work ordinance systems so that we program it once, but it runs three times on the machine. We'll switch back over into Fusion and we'll take a look at how we can do a component duplication. So here I've got a different part up on my screen. And the idea with this part is we wanna run multiple of the same part and we're gonna maybe orient it on something like a fixture plate that's gonna locate our different parts. And so if you can see the majority of these are, are patterned and they're in a rectangular pattern and they're the same spacing. However, let's pretend that I had enough material to fit two more pieces on here, but I had to turn them sideways. So you can see that these are kind of turned sideways and mirror images of each other. I have some tool paths laid down that program this first uh, part just the way that I want it. And there's enough tool paths that I don't want to do that to every part on this. So what I want to do is do something called the component pattern. There are two ways we can access the component pattern. I could highlight all of the different uh, tool paths and go to the setup menu and then choose to uh, to do a new pattern. I could also right click on these and choose to add to new pattern. And that's the method I'm going to use to get here. So now I'm patterning all those tool paths and I have some different choices like linear or circular or mirror. But the one that I want to focus on here is going to be the component pattern. So I'm going to select component pattern and you can see that we're set to automatic and what's going to happen is I'm going to choose what the source object is and Fusion's automatically going to find all the uh, target objects that are the same and apply the tool path to them. And you can see that I have some options, the same option that I had when I did the uh, WCS duplication where we can preserve the order, order by operation or order by tool. So I'm going to go ahead and select my target or my source I should say. And I'm going to click on the source and when I do Fusion automatically applies the tool paths to all the rest of the components that are laid on in my screen, whether they were patterned or placed or how they might be. Fusion just looks at their name, realizes the component, and adds the tool path exactly as they were added to the original source object. Pretty powerful tool, and it'll save us a lot of time. I'll go ahead and to hit OK to, to accept this, and there you can see that I programmed one part, and Fusion made pretty short work of adding those tool paths to all the rest of the components in my screen. I hope you guys found this useful. Um, thanks to Danny for suggesting the video. And if anybody has any suggestions or questions that uh, they would like to ask me about, please go ahead and leave those in the comments. And uh, we'll try to get to more ideas like this if you come up with them. Love to see some questions on there as well. And thanks for taking the time to watch.